In this video, we're going to change the pinch roller on the transport of our 244. Same instructions will apply for a Tascam 246. The first step is to remove this little C clip that's keeping the whole pinch roller arm on. This little thing that I'm turning here. What I usually do is get it so that the open part of the C is pointing that way, the corner of a flathead screwdriver, to one corner of that C, and then with the other one, I'm pinching against the edge of the pinch arm roller with these pliers pinch. And you want to do this in a fairly large surface area because this little C-clip is going to pop off. I'm going to store that somewhere where it won't get lost. Now if I pull back on the spring and lift this up, that's going to come out. Likewise, store the spring. Now that the pinch roller arm has been removed, we need to get the old pinch roller out of that. So I'm going to put pressure between the tip of this pair of pliers on the pin against the pinch roller arm on the other side. Pinch and it will click slightly and just repeat the process from side to side. As you do it, more and more of that is going to protrude. So eventually it's going to push in slightly like that and then you'll be able to pull it out using that protruding part. Pinch roller from another machine. Now actually, you see how I can stick my fingernail into that and it doesn't bounce back. I can leave all sorts of marks in it. That's not really good enough, but it's the only one of the correct size that doesn't require modification of this pinch roller arm in order to install. So if you just imagine that's a fresh one that you've bought from a kit, I'm just lining that up. Yeah, so I've pushed that in from there. I can click it again. The worst bit of this job is installing this spring when you reattach the pinch roller arm onto the transport. First of all, that protruding part of the spring needs to go through this hole. Then we need to line up the hole on the spring with the rear hole on the pinch roller arm so that they slip over that pull like so. Then we need to raise it very carefully, just enough so that we manage to get the long leg of the spring underneath there and across here into that V-shaped recess underneath. I appreciate you couldn't really see that because my fingers were in the way, but it's very difficult to film in there to show you what I'm doing. So I'll just, without actually doing it, I'll try and describe that again. The hole of the spring and the hole of the back of this pinch roller arm you need to get lined up. And when you slide it on, the spring's liable to come off the edge until this hole on this side of the pinch roller arm has that metal pull in it. But you need to leave it half in and half out so that there is a space down here for the other part of the spring, that spring, to come underneath. It's pretty fiddly. Just persevere with it. That's how it should look when you're done. That long arm of the spring underneath and poking out in that little V and the shorter truding part is in that hole on the pinch roller arm. With that pull going through the spring and both holes on the pinch roller arm. So now we'll replace this C-clip. Push it on part of the way with my finger and then pinch it on the rest of the way with pliers. Your new pinch roller is now installed. In another video, I'll show you how to adapt this pinch roller arm to take more commonly available and cheaper pinch rollers. I'll also show you how I use cheap neoprene parts from the plumbing industry to substitute for idler tires and for the control belt. I have found, however, that you can't really scrimp on these. I pay about nine pounds, including postage each for these, but the other three parts, there is some saving to be had. If you're only doing it once off, having lower stress levels, you, you might want to just go and get one of those kits and be done with it. But if you're feeling industrious, look out for that upcoming video.